Well, good morning, Cornerstone. Good morning, Cornerstone. Um, I don't know if you're what to say if you're in for a treat. I don't know. But I am a, a youth pastor. So this morning, you're my youth, okay? Somebody said, praise God. It feels good to be young again. Um, it's an honor to always stand up here. Um, and and, and any time I get to speak, um, I love it. So, But before I do, I believe in honoring the leaders of this house. Can we honor our leaders, Pastor Jerry and Sister Renee? Come on, give it up for them. Incredible, incredible leaders. Um, we've been at this church for six years, seven years now, maybe somewhere around there. And um, I've never served more faithful leaders in my life. The people you see up here are the people that um, I get to prank on Monday morning. So that's, that's what we kind of do around here. This morning we're talking about peace. Um, how many of you need some peace this morning? Come on, well, let's be honest, right, right out of the gate. If you need some peace, lift your hand up in the air. We all need some peace. This world is crazy. Somebody say amen to that. Um, we need peace. And I, I was thinking about this message, and when I was preparing for it, I just kept thinking about how wild this world is, how I'm always locking my doors, you know what I'm saying, turning the deadbolt, you know what I'm saying? You ain't really locking a door unless you turn a deadbolt, you know what I mean? And I was thinking about how I'm always looking over my shoulder, and it brought me back to this story. Me and Stormy were going to visit my parents in Groveton, Texas. If you don't know what Groveton is, they got a Dollar General. That's about it. And we were going out there to visit them. The truck was loaded down to the point where it was just the driver's seat and that little in-between seat, and we got pulled over. Um, and they said that I was going 87 and a 55. I don't know if that's true, okay? I don't necessarily believe that. Um, but they said it. You know who am I to argue? So they pulled me over. The guy, there's two cops that get out. So me, I, I come from a very, very innocent childhood, you know what I mean? So as soon as I see two cops get out, I'm like, perfect, I'm going to jail. It's been nice. Um, I've seen 60 days in, I know how it works, you know what I mean? I was already making preparations, got my mom on speed dial. The two cops walk up, they do the fingerprint on the back of the car thing, and I'm like, perfect, the drug dog's coming, I don't know what's happening. Honey, hide the Advil, I don't know what's going on, you know what I'm saying? Uh, the cop, he walks up to the door. And he says, hey, how are you? I said, I'm good. He said, you were doing 87 and a 55. I said, doubt that, but you're the man. You know you know how it goes. And he said, I'm going to need your license and your registration. The problem was, was that Stormy was sitting up against the middle console where we kept our registration and all that fun stuff. So I said, um, I'm going to need to get out of the truck, and Stormy's going to need to get out as well because we got to get our insurance and our information out. He said, that's a problem. That's, that's, that's good. I'll go. And I opened the door. As soon as I jumped out of the truck, maybe that's the problem. I don't know. As soon as I got out of the truck, boy grabs his gun and puts it like that right in my face. And I was like, I'm dying today. This is death. This is what this feels like. And he said, what are you doing? I said, I don't know. I'm going to die. Stormy starts crying, literal tears. We look like we've never like, been pulled over in our lives. And he says, I didn't tell you to get out of the truck that fast. I was like, I didn't mean to get out of the truck that fast. Like, I sounded like a criminal already. I was like, it wasn't me, I promise. I don't know what's going on. And the other cop, I figured out this guy was training. And a couple days before, he had a guy jump out of the truck on him. So the other cop just starts laughing. And I'm like, do you think death is funny? You know, this is the end of my life. And he says, sorry, bro, this place is crazy. This place is crazy. And I said, I feel that. I'm not even mad at you anymore. This world is crazy. Have you ever had a crazy instance in this world? I remember the other night, Stormy's brother-in-law was going to come over, and it was midnight, and nothing good happens at midnight. And he said, I'm going to come over, bro. I'm about 35 minutes away. I said, no problem. Just then, I hear three loud bangs on my door. Boom, boom, boom. Once again, it's death time in my mind. It's time to die. I've already made up my mind. So I go. I grab my gun. And I'm like, honey, I'm the leader of this household. I will defend this household with my life. And once again, I hear those boom, boom, boom. Then I get the gut feeling. I'm like, oh, no, right? Something starts to smell. I don't know what it is. Um, so I walk out. I go to the door. I said, babe, if this happens one more time, I'm telling you right now, Jeremiah Johnson's coming out into the front yard. Like, I'm, I'm letting him know. Boom, boom, boom. I bust out of the door. I go into the driveway. I'm holding my gun up. I say, I'm crazy. I'm insane. Just then, Stormy's brother runs around my house. Dude, don't kill me. Don't kill me. Don't kill me. This world's crazy. It's insane. I think now more than ever, we need peace. 
This world needs peace. Amen? What we're going to get into this morning is how we can get that peace, where that peace comes from. I want to preface this message, just in case you didn't know, that you will never find peace in politics. There is no peace in a political leader. Some of you think just if he gets office, then we'll get some peace. Yeah, peace out to that. Not true. Some of you, can I do this? You will never, ever find peace in drama. Ever. You think you could break up somebody's problem? No, you're just entering into becoming another problem. The only way to get real, genuine, authentic peace is through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Somebody say amen to that. The only way to get genuine peace is through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. If you have your Bibles, I want you to open it up to Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6. Real simple scripture. Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6. It says, for a child is born to us, a son is given. The government will rest on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Somebody say Prince of Peace. Come on, say Prince of Peace. We got good news this morning. You don't have to be worried. You don't have to be stressed. You don't have to be anxious because we serve a Prince of Peace. And we're going to learn about that this morning. If you're taking notes, point number one, I want to give it to you. Jesus is our peace in the midst of chaos. Jesus is your peace in the midst of chaos. We have to remember that as children of God, believers, Christians in this place, that our peace is directly connected to the strength of our relationship with the Lord. Our peace is, it's tied into our faith. What I mean by that is if it is your goal every day to wake up and get a new revelation of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, what I believe is that as you grow in your foundation of belief in the Lord, you will also grow in your peace. The things that shook you before will not shake you anymore. The things that held you bound will not hide you bound anymore. You will be able to walk free from things that once held you addicted. But conversely, if you are not strengthening your relationship with the Lord, you will find yourself mentally exhausted, stressed, overworked, um, freaking out all the time. But the good news is, is that if we find ourselves in Jesus Christ, the good news is you don't have to look for peace. You already have peace. It's on the inside of you. The Holy Spirit says, I bring love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, selflessness, and self-control. The problem is, is that you're not looking for the peace. You're looking for an excuse to have pride. Jesus wants to give you real peace. Sometimes peace means you have to get a little bit uncomfortable. Sometimes peace means that you might have to make a phone call and bring some cookies to somebody's house. Jesus, you call, God, bring me peace in my relationship. He's saying, I've given you the resources to go and get the peace for yourself. But too many times we want Jesus to do something so that we can say we've forgiven them, but we still have the burden of pride in our heart. Jesus is our peace in the midst of chaos. The reason he gives you peace in the midst of chaos is because he gives you assurance of rest. You know how important that is? Assurance of rest. The, 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 The assurance that everything is going to be okay. Recently, me and Stormy, recently as in now, we are walking through probably the hardest season ever in our lives. Um, If you don't know... In August, my mother-in-law, she took her own life, and things that you never think you will deal with, life has a good way of telling you you're going to deal with it. And in in an instant, just like that, I remember the phone call, I remember the terror, I remember the pain, I remember the brokenness, but I also remember as I reached out to the Lord, a peace that I had never understood before. What I believe more today than ever before That in the most hurtful times of your life, you will experience the greatest peace you've ever had in your life. I got to understand what the Bible means when it says a peace that surpasses all understanding. Jesus is the route that we take to get to a peace that surpasses all understanding. The good news is this morning, church, if you're experiencing loss like I am, 
experiencing loss like you might be, or maybe you're just going through a crazy season. It might be crazy on the outside, but you can have a crazy peace on the inside. Don't let the enemy tell you that life is steadily going downhill. Our life is not built on the things of this world. Our life is founded on eternity, which means we are only here for a little while, but where we are going will last forever. I am not defined by the things I go through in this life. I am defined by the blood of Jesus Christ that lives on the inside of me. Will somebody give God glory this morning? I'm defined by the finished work of Jesus. The good news is that the enemy will throw everything he has at you. If you never battled depression before, who knows? It it might be in your next season of life. Anxiety might be in your next season of life, but it does not have to hold you. Because John 4, 4 says, greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. We live for a greater place. This life is here today, gone tomorrow. It's a breath. It's a wave crashing in the, in the ocean. But our faith is forever. Jesus Christ is forever. Sure, I may be going through a loss, but greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. I'm going to give you a scripture, Philippians 4. It's going to be on the screen. Here's what it says. Don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. That's a whole message in itself right there. Tell God what you need and thank him for all that he's done. This is the best part. Then you will experience God's peace, which exceeds anything we can understand. His peace will guard your hearts and minds as you live in Christ Jesus. I'm going to give you some practical ways to get peace. How many people like to think practically? You can't, I mean, you got to be a visual learner. I'm a very practical guy. My dad got me, uh, you, you know them Blackstone gas grills? He got it for me, and he told me, he said, Corey, before you use it, you got you to season this thing, okay? And I said, no problem. So I started getting all my favorite seasonings. I got lemon pepper, huge lemon pepper fan. You're looking at king lemon pepper right here. I got some Creole, some Tony Saturines, holla at your boy. And if you're real in this place, I got some slap your mama. And I seasoned it. Like, I probably went to, through two, three bottles of seasoning, and I was like, that's enough seasoning, you know, probably. So I heat it up, and I throw some chicken on it. I'm thinking, that's seasoned all right. And after I go to clean up, after we eat this well-seasoned chicken, I don't even know if the chicken was in it. I'm just eating, like, layers of lemon pepper. Stormy's like, is this supposed to taste like this? I don't know. Just doing what the instructions say. honey. And I go to clean it, and I notice that there's, like, a, a, a two-inch stuck muck on my Blackstone grill. And I said, no problem, it'll come right off. And it did not. And a year later, it is still there. Um, I'm very practical. I called my dad. I said, Dad, that was a horrible idea. Why would you ever tell me to season a grill? He's like, what do you mean? My grill's seasoned. It works perfect. He said, I'll come by there tomorrow. And he rode by, and he was like, you broke it. (laughs) What did you do? I said, seasoned it. And uh, after very many hurtful words, we our relationship was restored. Um, I'm a very, very practical thinker, practical to the bone. I'm going to give you three ways that you can have peace today. Before you walk out of this place, you can have peace today. Number one is prayer. If you want peace, you need to become a person of prayer. Prayer is one of the things of our faith that the enemy is continually trying to get out of the Christian walk. I hear this continually all the time. Why pray when God knows everything? Why pray when he already knows what's going on in your life? Friend, let me remind you that prayer moves the heart of God. God sees your spirit. He sees your prayer. And if you want peace today, the best way to get it is to give what you're holding on to away. Just give it away. It's not yours. Look, if it's not good, it's not from God. Give it away. First one's peace. Second one is worship. You have to become a person of worship. Here's what's cool about that. I don't mean know all the Chris Tomlin songs. Music is worship. Worship is not necessarily music. Worship can be tithing. Got quiet when I said that. No, it can't. I'm going to Mama Juanita's after this. (laughs) Worship can be tithing. Worship, here's the good one. Worship can be evangelizing, telling people about the Lord. Last night, maybe this morning, at 1 a.m., 
I'm finishing up a set. I do my, my testimony. I do all this stuff. And somebody runs to the altar in tears and hugs me and said, thank you for bringing the gospel into this place. I walked away from the Lord. I just needed to know that Jesus is still good. We prayed right there on the spot. They're going to be in service, second service. Evangelizing is peace. Third way, and this is my favorite, is forgiveness. So many times the reason we don't have peace is because we have unforgiveness inside of our heart. You can have the peace, you just don't want to give away your hurt. Because your hurt gives you an excuse to be bitter. Your hurt gives you an excuse to have hurtful feelings against somebody else. And when somebody says, hey, why are you feeling like this? Then we get to cast the problem on somebody else. Well, they did this to me. That's why I feel like this. It's their problem that I'm where I'm at. No, the only problem with where you are at is where you are at in your mind. You keep yourself where you are. If you want peace bad enough, you're going to go get it. If you want to really have peace, then you'll make that phone call or the text message. Me and Pastor Joseph, you may not believe this, we've been friends for 12 years. There was a time we didn't talk to each other for a year and a half. We were in youth group, and we got into like a fist fight, and we were done. I was like, bro, I never want to see you again, dude, whatever, blah, 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 blah. And, and, and after a church camp one year, the Holy Spirit said, hey, I thought you wanted restoration in you and Joseph's relationship. I said, I do, but he won't apologize. I do, but he's, he's tripping. And the Holy Spirit said, then you don't want peace. You want excuses. And I feel that on my heart for somebody this morning. You want peace, but you don't want to give up what hurts you. Listen, you need to be the one as a Christian, as a Christ-centered believer, to make the phone call and say, hey, what's in the past is in the past. God is not interested in this relationship being broken. He's a God of restoration. And he wants to move in somebody's life today. Come on, give God glory. You need, that's, for, that's a message for somebody in this place. You need to make the phone call. You need to. We need to stop being believers who sit around and be passive aggressive all the time. You need to be the one who says, I don't only want God to move in my life, I want God to move in their life. How do you know you're being uh, spiritually mature? When you want God to move in your enemy's life. That's how you know. I can't wait when we get to heaven and somebody walks in and says, how did they make it? That's not, okay, that's bad. We're here forever, you said? Good. All right. Make the phone call. Make the text message. God is a God of peace. I want to give you number two. Peace is obtained through an avenue of trust, not understanding. I'm going to say that again. Sometimes it's like you guys forget I can see your face. <laughs> I'll say. Peace is obtained through trust, not understanding. So many times... And I can only imagine what, what pastor hears. As a youth pastor, I hear that I can't have peace because why would God do this? Why did God take them away? Why did God make this happen? Look, you are not God. You don't get to ask why. God's not interested in your why. He's interested in your obedience. He says, trust me. All things will be taken care of. And some people in here today, you're asking God, why, why, why? Listen. If you want peace, give away your why. Just throw it out the window. You don't need to know why. All you have in this life is a puzzle piece. God has the entire thing put together already. The reason that we ought to listen to him when he speaks is because he sees where we're going. We don't. It doesn't matter why. Just trust God. You will never get peace in your spirit if you are always looking for answers. We don't need answers. All we need is Jesus Christ. Come on, somebody. All we need is Jesus Christ. Give away your why. John 14, 27 says this. This is Jesus speaking. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Not as the world gives it to you. Catch this. Let your heart not be troubled. Neither let it be afraid. I love the, the diction that's used here. Let your heart not be troubled. Neither let it be afraid. Maybe it's the simplistic kind of thinker I am. But if he says, don't let your heart be troubled or don't let your heart be afraid, it makes me think that if my heart is afraid, it's because I've let it. If my heart is scared, it's because I've taken my eyes off Jesus and I've put it on something else. If my heart is anything but at peace, then the problem is my perspective, not Jesus. Jesus is never the problem. He is the problem solver. Come on, somebody. 
He's the problem solver. So if your heart is troubled, it's because you've let fear creep into your heart. If it's afraid, you've let fear creep into your heart. Fear is a perspective issue. You've taken your eyes off the cross of Calvary, and you've put it on your situation. Here's the simple message. Don't let the enemy steal your perspective. If he steals your perspective, he's stolen your peace. Just like that. Sure, my mother-in-law may be gone. I'll never know why. But what I do know is I could still give God glory in that situation. Because he knows something that I don't. I have to rest in that. Some of you have gone through tremendous loss. And now every time somebody's in your life, you don't let them get too close because you're scared that you'll lose another person. You've taken your eyes off Jesus. He wants to give you real peace today. And what I love about the peace that Jesus brings, it is, it's not dictated on anything that can happen to me. It's not dictated on anything that you can do to me. Listen, you can take my house away. You can take my car away. You'll see me walking down I-45 with a smile on my face because who I have inside of me is greater than who's trying to come against me. You can take it all away. We have to get to a place. Come on, hear me, Christian. We have to get to a place in our lives where we do not prioritize anything other than Jesus Christ. He takes number one. The harsh truth is that if anything's above him, it's an idol in your life. Jesus has to be number one. We have to get to a place in our life where what really matters is not spending more time on an Xbox. That's for the younger generation. Or what really matters is not spending more time with family or all this stuff. Jesus says, you have to love me more than your family. He actually goes really harsh and says, compared to how much you love me, it should look like you hate your family. Convicted my spirit. And in a world today where our government's running rampant and our people are running rampant, and it seems like there's no peace to be found in the, can I say this, our education system's running rampant. And it seems like there's no peace to be found anywhere. I still believe that there's peace to be found in Jesus Christ. And that's not a message for this church. That's a message for the world church. Everybody. That's a message for people. In closing, I stood up last night in a place where many Christians would tell me that I was going to hell if they knew I was in. But we can't say we believe in Jesus and not go into the dark. Because light shines best in the dark. And I remember I'm standing on the stage. And I start to sing about God's love. In a place where the only thing people are concerned about is just getting more and more intoxicated. Getting rid of their issues through what they think is an avenue of drinking and all this stuff. And I stand in a place of complete darkness. My Bible in my hand. Singing. Oh, the overwhelming, never-ending, reckless love of God. And I look at people, some people looking at me like, bro, get off the stage. If it's not Hank Williams, I'm not interested. And then I always see, always, it doesn't matter where I'm at, always I see somebody in the back just looking at me, just one person. And before I know it, both hands are in the air in a honky-tonk. And people are worshiping Jesus in a honky tonk. I'm not going, I'm not, the only reason I go where I go is because I want to see Jesus change somebody else's life like he changed my life. And I'm standing on stage and I see that one person worship and I see the second worship and I see the third worship. And last night specifically, I said, Jesus wants to give you peace in your life today. I said, if you don't know him, he wants to change your life today. You don't have to be perfect. You don't have to be anywhere near perfect. Come to him as you are, and he wants to change your life. And as I walk off the stage, somebody runs to me in tears for prayer. Church, I'm tired of us being people who are only interested in our own peace. I want to take peace into the world. This is a, a lost, dying, hurting world that needs the peace of Jesus. And some of you are convicted today because you need the peace of Jesus too. 
you've been looking anywhere other than the cross, if it can come through your efforts, then it's just temporary. But if you get a peace through Jesus Christ, it'll last through anything you go through. Any battle you face, he'll be there for you.